All right, here are some notes on normal distribution exploration number one. So in this, we're going to sort of discover what a normal distribution is. Before we can do that, we need to go back and look at some vocabulary review from Algebra 1. The first word is mean. The word you guys usually use for mean is what you call the average. Sorry. The letter for mean, we use the Greek letter mu. It's a lowercase mu. It looks kind of like that. And the way we find this average is when we add the numbers up and divide by the number of items. So that's a typical average to us, right? That's the mean. The median. The median is what we would describe as the middle. And to find the median, what we do is we put the numbers in order and we find the middle. So that's also another type of average, but it's not what we usually call the average. All right, the mode is the most common. So that's another thing we would use to describe average because it's the most popular or the most frequently occurring number. All right, the last thing you should have done in Algebra 1 is standard deviation. The standard deviation is what we would describe as the spread of the data. The letter we use to describe this is a lowercase Greek letter sigma. So sigma was standard deviation and mu up here was average. We need to know those two letters and what they mean. They are on your formula sheet though. Okay, so uh, we're not going to worry about calculating a standard deviation. I'll always give it to you or you'd be able to read it off a graph. But basically the bigger the standard deviation, the bigger the mu, the more spread out the data. Okay. If we have a little sigma, that would mean everything's pretty close to the average. All right, so I keep using this word average, and now we're going to apply that to a new thing. What is normal? Well, normal means typical or average, but in math, normal has a special meaning, and that's what we're going to see what we have right here. Uh, this is a table, and the table lists the heights of a thousand American men. The mean or the average height is five foot nine, and the standard deviation is three inches. So this is a table of that collected data. So if you look at how many men were under five feet tall, there was one men out of the thousand men listed. So the probability that you were under five feet tall was one out of 1,000 men. If we convert that to a decimal, it's 0 0.001. So as a percent, we would move the decimal places two to the right, and that's 0.1%. So very few men are under five feet tall. Then we have ranges. If you're between five foot and five three, between five three and five six, and so on. So. Let me scroll this down a little bit for the last two questions. What is the sum of all the probabilities? If we took all of these probabilities and added them together, what would the sum be? Well, it would be a thousand out of a thousand if we added the fractions, or one, because it would be everybody. So the probability that you're on this chart if you're a man, 100%, the probability is one, everybody's included. What observations can we make about the data in the table so far? Well, what looks like it's average? Average looks like it's sort of right in here. This is where we'd call our average. So if we were to add up all of these men, counting 342 in this group and 136 in the next group, et cetera, what we'd find is that the mean and the median or the middle and the mode are all about five foot nine inches because that was right here in between these two groups, okay? What else can we tell? 
we can tell that this data is pretty symmetrical. I had on both sides, I had 342. On both sides, I had 136. On both sides of the mean, I had 21. So that's another observation I could make is the data was symmetrical. All right, so if we turn this paper over and we look at the back, it says draw a histogram for the probability of each of the category heights. So we're going to take these probabilities right here and we're going to put them on the graph and there they are. So here were my heights, my categories for how tall you were, and then these were my probabilities written as a decimal. So you can see the biggest ones were in the middle and then it tapered off on the edges. It says draw a point at the midpoint of the top of each bar. So right here in the middle of each bar, I'm going to put a midpoint. And then it says connect the data points with a smooth curve. Well, I'd start out kind of flat here, and then I'd be going up. If I'm going to be a smooth curve, I have to go up a little bit higher before I start coming down. And there we go. Number six says, what do you observe about the graph's shape? Well, if we had to describe this shape, what we usually call it is a bell shape. You've heard that word bell curve before, and that's this shape, the bell curve. What do you observe about the graph's symmetry? Well, if we had to draw a line of symmetry right here down the middle, my graph would fold over on both sides, and where is that? Um, it's symmetrical about the mean. I could also say, or the median, which is the middle, or the mode, which is the most frequent, because all of those are going to be the same place for this graph. Also, what do you observe about the high point of the graph? The high point of the graph would be right here in the middle again. So also, it's at the middle, which is again, the mean, the median, or the mode. Okay, so this curve is what we consider a normal curve. Um, Last question down there. What do we observe about the graphs mean, median, mode, probability? They are all the same. And last it says, in the box below, read the characteristics of a normal curve and then describe the, how the curve you drew compares to the normal curve. Well, in order to be a normal curve, they're all going to look like this. They are all going to be nice bell shapes. So let's just read these in order. It says every bell curve, the mean, the median, and the mode are equal, just like they were in mine. They are all bell shaped and they are symmetrical about the mean. The curve never touches the x axis but comes closer and closer to the x axis as it gets further from the mean. So this means the x axis is an asymptote. You can put that on there. And the total area under the curve is equal to 1. Where did this one come from? Well, I said, what is the sum of the probabilities? The sum of the probabilities is one. So if we added up all of these areas in here, this area would have to be equal to one, even though it's not a nice rectangle anymore. If I sorted it the base times height of a whole bunch of little shapes and added them up, the area there would be one. All right, so we're gonna move on to another video next and we'll look at how we can do some solving problems with normal distributions.